if you had because the heart's not just a pump if you right. had to do a quick elevator pitch about the heart and like God, it, this is its resume this is what it can do yeah yeah how, how could you summarize it quick, you know? well first of all it's an information processing center in the body and it's sending information to the brain and throughout the entire system it actually does it in four ways through a nervous system in the heart through the blood pressure wave and the changes that are occurring in that blood pressure wave that influence things like brain function. The heart produces hormones. Most people don't know that, but it produces a number of very important hormones. And lastly, it communicates energetically through an electromagnetic field that is created by the heart that extends beyond our skin out into space. So you have a physical heart pumping blood, but what people don't know in the elevator speech pitch is that it's an information processing center in the body got it got it and it's that information i'm really curious about and and you know somebody a friend of mine is studying heart math at the moment and they sent me and they knew i was catching up for you today and they sent me a study and i haven't had a proper chance to break it down and have a look at it yet but yeah. it was it was around intuition and uh, the cognitive precognitive approach with when yeah. you're showing people photographs do you mind that's right I thought that could be a good conversation to bring yeah, that's, up as well. Yeah, that's a really cool one. Um, you know, the, what I just described in the elevator pitch is how the heart is sending information. Uh, other research we've done also implies that the heart is receiving information. Again, information processing center would mean a lot of things, both sending and receiving. The study you're talking about is a study called the uh, Electrophysiology of Intuition Study. Right. It was published in a major journal, Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. Uh, it was a very large and expensive study to do. And what, what the researchers were looking at is they were trying to see if that they could physiologically decode what people refer to as a precognitive response, meaning that we are sensing something before it happens. And you know, was there a way to begin to see if that was, if there was anything physically could be measured in that regard? So the research protocol was set up this way. Uh, they s carefully selected a large set of, of, of pictures, photographs. Some of those photographs were uh, intentionally horrific. You know, a car accident, oh, someone wow. being stabbed, okay. things like that. The other images were very beautiful and evocative, and they knew how to sequence them in terms of the number of each kind uh, to have the right mix. They were placed into a computer and the computer was set into a random selection mode, meaning it was not programmed to show this picture, then this picture, then this picture. It was on random selection, right? So test subjects were brought in and they were, um, they were hooked up to a variety of measurement devices. They were getting brain data, brain wave data. They were getting heart data, uh, lots of different kinds of, of data around what was going on in the heart and other data too, like the skin temperature change data. So a lot of physiological information was being sent back you know, from this, this test subject. And the way it worked was they'd sit in front of a computer. Um, a message would come up on the computer saying, please press this button and they would press a button. The screen would stay blank for six seconds. After six seconds, one of those pictures, one of those kinds of pictures would show up on the screen randomly selected by the computer. It would stay on the screen for three seconds and then the screen would go blank again. And after 10 seconds, here comes the same message, push the button, right? Mm -hmm. So they push the button again and the sequence is repeated over and over and over again with each test subject. So that data was collected and then they began to analyze the data to see what they could determine from it. And this is where it got really fascinating. They found that in many to most cases, the body was responding to the upcoming picture six seconds before the picture was on the screen. In other words, the body was, was acting like the picture was there, but it wasn't there. Wow and it was six seconds before the picture actually manifested on the screen that the body was doing what it was gonna do if it had been there, right? That was one blow away discovery in all of this. The second part of the analysis produced some even more dynamic results. What they found was when they began to look at and map out the process, the information traffic that was occurring in the body while this was going on, they could see very clearly that it was the heart that was responding first. The heart was responding to the upcoming picture six seconds before it was there. About a second and a half later in most cases, they respond.
to the upcoming picture. And then about a second to a second and a half before the picture shows up on the screen, they couple together what's called a frequency match. They synchronize at a frequency level and then the picture appears. So it was heart brain, heart brain combining picture. And the body was, was actually uh, showing that it was uh, responding to something in the future. Um, so the other thing that was the last part of that analysis that was pretty cool is that uh, they had some of the test subjects that they trained in the heart lock-in technique, which you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, where you practice that before shows, right? They were trained to do that. So they do a heart lock-in, which is a heart meditation type process, for a few minutes before they went into the lab to do their, their, their experiment. In those cases, the people that got into their heart got what we call coherent before they went in there at a much higher incidence of pre-picture uh, responses. Now, at the end of the study and the conclusion of the study and the summary, uh, basically what they say, I'll paraphrase now non-scientifically, but what they're saying is, is that it appears as if our body is constantly scanning for future events, that it is a intelligence that we have that we're not aware of, that it's always going on, we're just not aware of it. And then it goes on to imply that we as we develop that, we develop a very uh, useful new skill uh, in anticipation. And so in our training programs and things like that, we talk about things like practical intuition. We ground that out. You know I mean? We take it down to what does that mean in your daily life? You know, uh, it means that maybe you determine that it's not time to speak to that person yet about a particular subject. Or if you are going to speak to them, maybe it begins to inform you about the type of words to use. You know, yeah, um, right. it can inform you about a person to hire, for example, in a business setting, and whether this person is better than that other person. They have the same level of resume. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that intuition plays out. The cool thing, though, is it shows that uh, it, it certainly lends itself to the possibility that the heart is actually pulling in information from another field of uh, of information the quantum field, which is beyond time and space, and the intuitive field, which would be a direct knowingness, a type of knowingness that is different than logical linear intelligence, and that the heart is playing a key role at bringing that intelligence into our system. Love it.